Right, good morning everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, very excited to uh, present WebFirm's uh, first webinar um, to uh, its clients. Um, it should be the, the first of many. Very excited to, uh, that, that you can join us today. So uh, welcome everyone uh, right around Australia. We have people uh, in most of the states dialing in today, so very exciting, uh, especially those over in Perth. I guess it's not too early in the morning, but, but welcome, <laughs> welcome over there. Um, I'm Rhys Kerr, I'm uh, a business development manager uh, here with WebFirm and also today uh, I have Andrew Hocking. Hello everyone, it's uh, lovely to be here with Rhys. Uh, Rhys has run a few webinars in, in the past so uh, happy to be joining him. Um, I've been working at WebFirm for four years so most of you actually on the call now are probably, probably familiar with me and I've probably worked with you in some, some degree in the past. Um, but for those of you who don't, I'm an account manager and um, I've been working on SEO for, for pretty much the whole time. So um, I'm well versed in, uh, in reporting and analytics and in particular this new dashboard. So I'm um, happy to be on the call. Perfect. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Andrew lives and breathes this uh, most days. Um, so it's, it's really good to have him here today. Um, some of you will be working with him, as he said. Um, so really keen to uh, get some of his insights. Um, today. Um, just a few housekeeping things guys, um, you can uh, ask questions, um, so if you would like to uh, ask a question you'll see in the little uh, the little box on the, the launch uh, system that you've used there, um, feel free to ask a question. What we'll probably do is um, we will ask all, uh, sorry, answer all the questions at the end of the webinar. Um, Probably more than likely we're going to cover off the information during the session, but if not, we will have a Q&A session uh, at the end of the hour. Speaking of time, um, we do have a lot of content to get through. Um, we will crack on in just a moment. Um, some of it may we may be flying through a little bit quickly. Um, we will be recording the session and we will be sharing it post-webinar, so uh, you will be able to go through in your own time. Uh, but also if you are wanting to touch on a particular piece of information that you don't feel we covered in enough depth for you, um, feel free to contact your account manager uh, at WebFirm and we'd be more than happy uh, for you to, to go through that with you. So on the call today, we've obviously got um, existing clients, some of you who are already using this reporting dashboard that we're going to be introducing you to today, so that is great. Some of you don't have this reporting dashboard just because of uh, the campaign you may have with WebFirm, um, or you may not in fact have an online marketing campaign uh, in place at the moment. We've also got some people who I guess we'd call friends of WebFirm who aren't clients at the moment, um, but we, we do have an existing relationship with uh, in some way, shape or form, so welcome to those of you on the call as well. Right, without further ado, um, we are going to get into some of the content. So just a bit of an agenda for what we're going to be covering off today. Um, we're going to be talking about where we have come from. So um, talking about, I guess, the reporting uh, tools and software we've been using up until this point. We'll move from there and talk about the evolution of change. What, what has really pushed us over the edge, if you will, um, to, to go down this route of having a bespoke custom reporting dashboard for our, our valued clients. We'll be talking about what information uh, we'll be able to get from the dashboard itself um, and why is it, it is important that, you know, hopefully it's going to be a key part of your, um, you know, business uh, and how you run your business from day to day um, and, and the information you'll be able to get from it and be able to share with your team. One of the probably the most important things we're going to talk about today, and Andrew is, is going to walk you through very quickly uh, with this, but you know, how do you actually get into your dashboard? If you've been having some troubles there and getting in, um, we'll give you a quick heads up on how you can get into the dashboard. And then probably the most juicy content of the day, um, certainly what I'm most excited about, is doing a bit of a live demo within the back end of the platform, talking about the functionality we have, uh, talking about the, the deep sort of insights and um, rich information we can get from the various parts of the platform um, to inform, the, I guess, your, your decisions, especially from a marketing perspective. Mm. I'll just say, um, perhaps don't uh, try and log into your own dashboard at this point. We'll just run through um, our session using using our logins, um, and then perhaps if you want to look at your own data after, you can you can log in using your, your own details. Absolutely, yeah, good point. Because um, I think if you try and follow it on your own dashboard while we're doing it live. Um, Unless you've got two computer screens in front of you, it might become a bit of a, a minefield. Um, so as I said, we are recording it. 
you can go through it in your own time afterwards, but um, if you can um, just sink your teeth into what we've got on the screen here, you'll get the most value from that. Yep. So where have we come from? Um, love the image up there on the screen, Andy. Do you know what that is on the screen? I'm not sure if you're I too do. young to know no, what no, that no, is. No, no, no. You we had those? that back in high school. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Overhead, overhead projector, the OHP. Yeah. yeah. Brings back good memories. Anyhow, um, where have we come from? For those history buffs out there and for those of you who have been with WebFirm for a number of years now, um, you're probably more well-versed in this, Andrew. Give yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take this yeah. if you want. Yep. Um, so... I suppose where we came from in terms of uh, reporting abilities, um, we used to have something called AW Stats. So that's something that we um, established on our, our clients' websites. Um, so you would just essentially log in on the back end and you would see some real basic key statistics, uh, traffic numbers, um, and when they were sort of coming into the site at what times. And that was sort of about it. Um, moving on, there was Urchin. Uh, Urchin is essentially Google Analytics, except before Google Google bought Urchin. Um, so the, Google has adapted it and, and made it a bit more powerful, and that's essentially what most people will use today, uh, all digital marketing agencies, including ourselves. Um, and that was kind of what we used to make all our decisions and, and report from. Uh, moving forward, we then set up ranking dashboard and use that in conjunction with Google Analytics. Um, so you can see your rankings and then on another place you can see your, your Google Analytics data. Um, but now we've got this new dashboard where it combines not only your rankings, it combines your analytics, Google Search Console, which we'll touch on, links in your AdWords data, call tracking data, um, and all your social media um, data as well. So that's what we'll be running through today and um, that's where we're at. Mm. So it's your one-stop shop, if you will. Yep, <clears throat> exactly. The whole, the whole Okay, um, so I guess what, what's tipped us over the edge here, Andrew, I guess from my perspective, I, I, I deal with, um, I guess, new people with, yep. that, that you know, want to work with WebFirm on, on their marketing campaigns. Something that I've picked up out there uh, in the market and feedback from, from various people uh, right across you know, different verticals is that um, clients and businesses out there are wanting better information to make decisions from, to make you know more informed decisions. But also there's there's been a real lack of transparency. There's yeah, yeah. A, a lot, lot of cowboys. Um, yeah, 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 a lot <laughs> of cowboys. Um, I think, and, and look, we, we've got to put our hand up here as well. Um, yeah. We're, we're proud on, on the reporting uh, information we've, we've provided for our clients up until this point, but it's very been much a, um, you know, a monthly type report. It yeah. hasn't always been that that, you know, being able to go in there at any time of the day, 24-7, and get full transparency. Look at and six months to a year's worth of data. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, our clients deserve the best. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I guess we've been striving for. And I think we're at that point now, right across, you know, Andrew took you through the, the wee history lesson, um, going through from AW Stats through Urchin, Google Analytics, and so forth. Um, it has been that sort of constant need and, 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 and appetite for improvement here and we think we're nearly at the point, well we think we are at the point where we've got this very slick reporting dashboard that gives us all of those and, and ticks all those boxes. Yeah, yeah, and, and the, the industry in general is just constantly evolving. Um, mm. Google Analytics is constantly throwing up updates. Every, everything in general in digital marketing is evolving and that includes um, data that we were able to uh, get access to. Perfect, yeah. So, Mr. Brent, <laughs> what a great picture that is. Um, what information will it tell me? So, um, Andrew touched on this just a moment ago, but you know we've moved on from just showing you rankings and Google Analytics. Um, whilst they're great and some awesome information in there, we can also provide you some some information from Google Search Console. In a nutshell, what are we talking about, Google Search Console, Andrew? Well, I know we'll open up more on the short. Yeah, end, but yeah. It, 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 in a nutshell, it's kind of like the Google Analytics for your uh, for for Google search engine results pages. So, mm -hmm. what's happening on on Google search results? Not so much what's happening on your website. Okay, right. Perfect. So step back. Yep. So, uh, for those of you who are out there, you're running AdWords and, and display campaigns through Google. We can feed that information through. Um, we've got some uh, some really slick uh, call tracking software now that we can feed into the platform. Um, and of course your social media. So for those of you who, who are out there working with our social media uh, guru, Josh Ramsey, um, you'll be familiar with the reporting uh, information we can get through the software um, for social media as well. 
So we're about to jump into uh, the back end of, of the platform. Um, again, uh, it's, it's much more useful if you just follow on the screen log, rather than logging into your into your own platform there. Just a quick heads up, Andrew. Yeah. How, how, do, how do they log in? Okay, so so most of you, so existing clients, you, you would have received an email, um, if, if depending on what sort of package you're on, um, asking you to, to log into your new dashboard. So that, that will be in your email somewhere, um, and, it, and you can search it by searching for activate your new uh, reporting dashboard, and uh, you'll be able to find your logins in there. If, you, if you're having trouble finding it or you never received the email, please give us a call and we'll be able to... Um, uh, provide you with those details. Mm. So you essentially just, just type in a, a URL, which is dash.webfirm.com. As you'll see up on the screen here. And see up, up, up here. And then you'll just be asked to log in, and you log in with your username and password. So again, if you don't have them or you can't find them, please give us a call. Perfect, lovely. So let's let's jump in here. Andrew, you've got? Yep, Yep. I'll no. take over for you. Okay. You wanna go? No, no, no. no. You, <laughs> we just had a bit of a handover. Okay. <laughs> Um, so the dashboard, Andrew. What do we got up on the screen here? Okay, so when you when you first log in, you'll be presented with um, a, a few little widgets here, right? Um, and then uh, ours, we've got access to all our clients, but you'll you'll just generally have access to just your own your own website. If you've got two websites, you'll you'll have access to two websites. Um, and then over here, we've we've got our little uh, date time selector. So at any point, you can change the date to you know to the last thirty days. See how that's going. Um, for the purpose of, of today, we'll be looking at mostly just all, all time, um, just because it gives you a stronger idea of how things are progressing over time rather than just in the last 30 days or, or even 60 days. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you'll see here a few little things, rankings, Google Search Console, which we mentioned before. You've got a few key statistics from Google Analytics. We can click into each one of these if we want. Um, but for the purpose of today, we'll, we'll generally be using this little uh, toolbar here, so you can access all the little areas as, as, you, as you so choose from here. Um, so we will actually start off with the rankings now that we're in here. Um, and we'll ignore this graph for the time being, and we'll, we'll go straight down to these uh, keywords here. So you'll, you'll all find this information here. Obviously, your keywords will be different related to your business. Um, generally, they'll be, well, they will be words that we've, we've discussed and, and identified as the focus keywords. Um, so they're not all the keywords that you'll be ranking for, but the main ones that we're, we're looking to rank you for strongly. Um, and so we'll see here, say for instance, uh, web design company, we're ranking number four. So this column will tell you the current rank. Okay. Right, and then the next one will tell you how much that particular keyword has changed in the time bracket that you've chosen. So for all time, for example, web yep. design company, we have moved up, so web firm as a company has moved yep. up 12 spots, correct? That, that's correct, yep. Okay. So our result for when people type in web design company will come up fourth, but back, you know, whatever time the all time is, we would have been uh, ranking out in um, uh, 16 spot. Okay, right, and, and what about Google Local and Google Mobile. Yep, so if we're looking at Google Local, we're, we're talking about the Maps results. This so your, map pack. Yep, the Map Pack. Um, you, you're probably all pretty f familiar with that now. It's been around for a while, the little map that shows up in certain Google search results. Um, if you're ranking in there and you see your business in there, you'll either be in one, two, or three. So we're looking for ones, twos, and threes for this column. Okay. And again, we can see how much that's changed over, over a period of time. Right, and Google Mobile, self-explanatory again. Yep. Um, slightly, it's pretty much the same as, the, as the, these, this Google Google column and Google change, except it's about the Google mobile ranking. So it's slightly different. It's based more on usability of, of, of a, a, a mobile, mobile website. On the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so just to touch on here, for those of you who, who do have a, a really strong presence on mobile, um, pay, pay some close attention to these statistics and these these rankings because you you know if your business is done mostly on a mobile device and that's where you're reaching your customers then you need to be ranking stronger yeah your, and, and keeping results. that as a focus yeah absolutely yeah. Yep. Um, so we'll just we'll just whiz back up to the top now and graphs. sort of trying to explain these graphs graphs so again we've got the the Google here relating to this we've got the Google change relating to to this so 
just for stars, I'll actually start on this this graph. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, essentially an accumulative um, growth number. So if we, we go back down here and we plus all these um, pluses and minuses together, mm -hmm. we'll get that 745 figure. So we can see accumulatively over time, over time since back in October, August 2012, um, our rankings have increased by 745 spots. So that's an umbrella yeah. figure. So I guess just to again to touch on what that means, it's that that's I guess an overall effectiveness um, metric of the, the entire campaign, not yeah. just individual granular keywords. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but then if you if you look at this this graph here, it tells a slightly different story. So we're we're looking at um, you know keywords grouped into where they're positioned. So how many keywords we have in spots one to three identified in the dark green? Mm -hmm. How many keywords we've got in spots four to ten identified in the light green? Okay. And so on and so forth. Right. So if we if we're looking at the last few months, we can see that we've actually started to get a little bit of extra red in there, and we've we've lost a little bit of green back mm -hmm. in you know, April. Mm -hmm. So the last few months. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a, had a bit of an issue and yeah. um, I would actually put that down to the fact that we've moved office. So we used to be based in South Melbourne and we're now in um, in, in the CBD. So some of our rankings for, let's say, South Melbourne yeah, design exactly. have, have slipped a little because obviously we're not based um, there anymore. Well, I'm Just sure we've got one. Here we go. So. Web Design South Melbourne. We're ranked 10th now. We were in spot three okay, because right. we've gone down seven spots. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and further to that, we can actually click on every single one of these keywords and get some more deeper information about that. So we'll just jump, yeah, again, we can see the history. So it's been ranking third for a very long time, very consistent too, might I add. Um, and then a big drop since when we moved. Okay. Um, what we'll look at is actually the SERP, which stands for? Search Engine Results page, Andrew. Good, just testing you. Thank you. All right, so we'll jump in here. Wait for it to load. So what is this showing us? This is some this is some great data. Yeah, yeah. This is this is something that you couldn't get in the previous ranking dashboard. For those of you who remember that one, um, this gives you information on where everyone's ranking for that particular keyword. So if you type in Web Design South Melbourne, you'll probably see these rankings in in this order. Um, so we can see ourselves down here in in thirteenth position. Right. Right. And then we can we've got a few extra key statistics here. But they're not, you probably wouldn't read too much into these is what I would say. Well, not um, in isolation anyway. Yeah, well, we, I mean, you might you might look at webnetwork.net.au and go, how are they ranking there? They've only got two pack links, mm. domain authority of eight, page authority of 21, Moz rank of 3.19, and compare that to, you know, someone down here. Yeah. And you so think, why? So there's probably some, some the deeper extra, analysis required there yeah. just to see that. They're obviously doing something else that is that is influencing their results. Exactly, it's not just yeah. these metrics here we're seeing on the screen. Mm -hmm. And another good thing to add is the, is the amount of links. Um, you know, we, we're probably always talking about links and all that sort of stuff, but it's it's certainly the quality as you as you'll probably see because you you would expect if links were the only thing, that would be up top. Lovely. So what we'll do now is um, we're going to jump into backlinks um, sure. with. Had some clients, some kind of clients that have um, provided some of their uh, information for us today to share, just to just to show you through the platform. Um, the first one is Tim at Cave Hill Creek out uh, near Ballarat. Thank you, Tim. Really appreciate it. I think you're on the call today, so hope you're having a, a good morning. Um, so what we have here is um, is effectively the backlink information. So what a backlink is in a nutshell, to to describe it as the simplest form, it's a link on the internet that is pointing back to your Back to your domain. Um, it may be from another website, it may be from your own website. Um, what we're going to focus on here today is so you can get all this information, the snapshot here, so you've got total backlinks, referring domains, so that's domains that are, that are pointing back to your website, trust flow, etc. What we're going to focus on today and what I would encourage you to focus on out there uh, are the referring domains. So these are the these are the domains that are pointing back to your website that yeah. are helping uh, you out in terms of domain authority and improving your organic organic score as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if we scroll down here, you can actually see the websites or the domains that are that are pointing back to um, to Cape Hill Creek. So we've got a few, you know, pretty heavy hitters here in the market: vtech.com.au, uh, the Tourism Awards uh, right here. Visit New South Wales are really good. 
got an excellent trust fund citation flow here, um, Ballarat.com and a few others. I, I guess an important point we'd like to make here is, and, and I guess, you know, a, a good example to use is, is something like visitnewsouthwales.com. It's not necessarily the number of the, the, the backlinks that are, that are pointing back to your website, it's the quality of the backlink. Yeah. So maybe five years ago, we'd be talking about the number and we'd be very focused on that, just building more and more backlinks to your, your website. Now we're having conversations about the quality. Yeah. So one quality backlink is a hell of a lot better than, than yeah. 100 oh, a hundred poor, or a thousand yeah. you know, poor links. It's, they just don't do them justice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so jump in there, have a look at your backlink profile. Um, next up, um, we're going to move. Um, we're going to move down um, into the next um, part of the dashboard. We're going to open up another client here, Australian Slate and Stone, and we are going to have a look um, at their uh, competition. So, what do we got here, Andrew? Well, we've got a little area here where we can have a look at some of our com main competitors and um, actually most of yours, because it's early days in this reporting dashboard, um, we haven't actually set up the um, competitors. So we need to have a discussion with each of you uh, to determine which are your, your main competitors yeah. and, and we can assist there with, with, with identifying those. campaign dependent as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just not automatically going to be in here. Um, so what it's telling us is the main probably thing we want to look at is the keywords in top 10. So we're looking at the keywords that um, is relevant to your uh, analytics dashboard um, and how th those keywords are comparing to competitors. So we can click on these little columns and order it by uh, lowest to highest or highest to lowest. Um, and we can see here Australian Slate and Stone have got six keywords in the top 10 out of the, the keywords that we're tracking. And we can see here that Yarra Bean Stone is, is the major competitor there um, mm. that we would perhaps want to want to topple. So Not it's good to strong. keep an eye on these competitors and mm. see what we can do, but perhaps they're doing something that we're not doing. Replicate some of this. Yeah, yeah, you know, maybe it's the backlinks and, you know, we can look at their website. And, you know, it's good to just keep an eye on them. Mm, mm, yeah. So while we've got Australian Slate and Stone up, it's probably worthwhile going into the next um, part of the SEO section of this dashboard and looking at the site audit. Yep. Um, uh, some, I, I guess a point to make here is uh, up until now with this particular reporting dashboard, um, some of the technical fixes that go in on behind the scenes within our space, within the online marketing space, um, it's a bit like taking your, you know, your car to the mechanic and dropping it off and saying, hey, fix my car. And at the end of the day, they say, hey, it's all fixed, and you're not sure what's happened under the hood. Yeah, yeah. Um, They've just got a big bill at the end of the day, and you're just wondering whether they've actually done anything. Absolutely. So what, what this gives us the ability to do, and, and of course it, it, it allows you to do it as, as you know, clients, is to come in here and see um, what technical things have improved over a period of time relating to the website. So um, this is not so much... Uh, keyword um, content wise, it's more the technical fixes. And yeah, 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 yep, yeah, exactly. So it's about bringing some of those issues from, the, I guess, from the dark into the light, um, and, and 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 allows you to see, you know, some of that technical things we're, we're doing behind the scenes. So what we've got here is some is some good improvement um, right at the top. Yeah. So back in June 2017, there were 621 issues with the website. Now that's come down to 317. Yeah, that halved. So, so that, that's what we want to see, essentially. Yep, just constant improvement. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and more and more errors can pop up, um, you know, day to day, week to week, month to month. Mm. So it's, you know, important that we're, we're keeping an eye on this and, and trying to, you know, keep them at a, at a minimum. Um, so talk now, about some of this colour coding, because some of it's yeah. worthwhile to take with a grain of salt. And yeah, of course, exactly. look at within the, app, you know, the, the context that the issue is in as well. Yep. So... You, some of you might actually see some, some red squares in here um, and some of you have a combination. It'll, it'll depend on, on all of you. Um, the green essentially means that there's no issues with that particular thing, so no broken external images. Um, and then we can see, you know, if you've got some red, that'll be the, the, the more serious ones that are almost non-negotiable issues. focus and yep. media. Yep. Um, whereas these orange ones um, provide you with 
an indication that something might be an issue. some something that might be an issue. So you've got to use your own discretion. So, for instance, if we look at um, two pages that have low word count, we can click on that. And we can go, okay, so it's the contact us page and the, and the products page. So I know for a fact that the products page is literally just listing out different products. So there's okay. there's no need for for information. It's that that first step to look at the products yep. in more detail later on down the down the funnel. The contact us page. We don't want to cloud that with a lot of content. We just want to see the, the name, address, phone number, that that sort of stuff. So it's all about context. Yeah, exactly. So you'll so, see the low the low word count test. It says just up here on the screen. It fails if it's less than two hundred. Mm -hmm. So it gives you some indication on why it's it's an issue. Um, but you know it's important to look at this with the context. Another thing to, to note here with regards to the, the site audit. So these are these are getting take these take place monthly uh, and bi monthly for your websites. We're always looking at these and having our technicians here improve things in the back end of the website to make sure that they are uh, as closely in line with Google's requirements as possible. Um, important thing to note here. Depending on the age of your website and how it's built, there are going to be some things that just can't be fixed just because of how they're built and, and how they're coded. Um, so for, for websites that are, that are current or, or reasonably current in, in, you know, in WordPress, um, what, what that allows us to do, it allows us to, build, to fix more of the technical things. Um, as I say, some of the older sites, um, it just gives us um, some challenges in terms, of, um, in terms of what we can actually change. If we can change it, we will. Um, but yeah, just, just to take that into account for those of you who do have some, some older websites. Um, so what we're going to do now is um, we may jump into Google Search Console with uh, Vectron. Sure. Vectron are a provider of pod systems, point of sale systems. Yeah. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. They're probably the best in the business. Not probably. They are the best in the business. Yeah, absolutely. So if you bring up the, uh, the Google Search Console. Yeah. Uh, down here. Yep. Right. So we did touch on this before. So it's kind of like the Google Analytics of the Google search pages results. Um, so what we're seeing here is information relating to your website that's happening on Google search results. So we can see uh, the amount of clicks, the amount of impressions. So that's views essentially. So 195,000 people have seen a Vectron result. In the in the date time, well, actually, Google Search Console only gives you 90 days of data, um, so it's only relating to the last last few months. Can I just can I pause? I just want yep. to put this in layman's terms because yep. this can be quite confusing yep. for for some people. So what we're saying is here, if someone has searched point of sale system or something relating to Vectron uh, .com .au, um, what this means is they have seen the Vectron little ad, not ad. Little listing snippet, snippet if, yeah. if you will, within Google, within the organic search results. 195,000 impressions, so that, that's been cited 195,000 times. From those 195,000 impressions, 3,000 people have actually clicked on a Vectron related snippet. That's right, no, that, that equals to 1.54%. Okay, right, so 1.5% of the 195,000 have clicked Click on it. this. Yep. Yep. Is that that's a good right. way? That's Have perfect. I described that. That's well, perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll learn from you. I'll learn from you. And if you scroll down, what we've got here is some rich information uh, in terms of um, keywords. The keywords that are driving those impressions and clicks. Yep. So if we look at Vectron, that's the company name. Um, you know, it's getting clicked quite a number of times. So the click through rate is, is 9.42%. Mm -hmm. So that's what we expect of, of the brand name because obviously people are searching for it. Um, whereas something you know non uh, non brand related um, key term that's super relevant for Vectron Pos System. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know we've had eight thousand impressions, two hundred and thirty two clicks, and a click through rate of two point seven two. So that that's a pretty good rule of thumbs around about three percent. Right. So um, and then it also gives you an idea of the average position. So it's you know it's jumping up and down on a on a day to day, week to week, month to month basis. So on average, we've, we've, we've got positive system at spot five. Lovely. Point and six. and just to highlight again, this is the last 90 days of data. We can't go yes. back any further than that. Correct. Um, but some, it's, it's really nice to know sometimes clients often wonder, hey, what, what search terms are actually driving the traffic to my website? Well, guys, this is where we go and, and find that information. Um, we'll just quickly just show you top pages as well. So this is, this is referring to uh, where people are arriving at within your site. 
from 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 Google. So mm. uh, this slash here that represents just the home page. So that's that's quite quite obvious that that would happen. Support a lot of people looking for support for their positive systems. Lovely. Cool. Okay, brilliant. Let's so, move on. Um, for the for the first section of Google Analytics, we're going to have a look at Metromix uh, Concrete. Cool. Um, so, if you bring up Metromix, um, what do Metromix do, Andrew? Oh, they are concrete supplier. Great. Well, that, that makes sense, doesn't it, with the name like I'll, that? I would, I would give them a plug, but they don't need it because they're they're ranking so well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just show you that. There you go. Perfect. To go um, jump into analytics, we'll look at channels first and foremost. Um, so just to, just a quick pause here. Um, so up until very, very recently, this is this is as much as we could, you know, not as, as much in conjunction with CERT results. This is as much as we could show you yeah. um, with yeah. our reporting tools. Essentially, um, this is this is all the stuff you would get from analytics. And absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, we could talk about the other things, but in terms of, the absolute transparency around all that information. Up until very recently, this is as far as we could go. Um, so everything we've talked up until this point should and, and will be uh, new information and new um, things that you can drive conversations that you're in with in your business. So up here on the screen, this is data fed directly through from Google Analytics. So in effect, if you, would, if you were to log into your Google Analytics platform, yeah. it would be the same data. It just doesn't look as pretty. Correct. Yeah. Um, so channels for those of you who are not aware, just the channels in which people arrive to your site. So whether they come through an organic search, so in, in Google or Bing, um, not including paid ads. Paid okay. search, paid ads. Um, social media, referrals, referrals are things like, you know, your yellow pages and those little business directories. You'll probably notice they only make up a very small percentage, as is probably high, I would say. Yeah. Three visits um, a month. Yeah, <laughs> thanks Yellow Pages. Yep. Uh, display, that's your uh, display ad. Some of you might have a display campaign, so you can get information about that. Email marketing, other other things, maybe your, your TV campaign that you're manually attributing some some um, some traffic into the website from. Okay, so we don't have, unfortunately we don't have um, a lot of time to be talking no. about this page in particular. Um, if, if some of this information is foreign to you and uh, it doesn't make complete sense, um, please do give your account manager a call, either uh, Andrew here sitting next to me or Andrew Coventry, Taran Laws, uh, and they'll be more than happy to take you through this information. Um, so we've got organic search here. Yep. Um, and you'll see that it drops off in August. That's because we're looking at a at a partial month in August. Yeah, so all, the, all these little dots mean a month. Um, we haven't had a month yet, obviously, in August. Yeah. So, it's, so this is your organic traffic. So over time, you are wanting to see that sort of constant improvement when you are um, you know, investing in, a, in, a, in a, on organic, an organic campaign. Yeah, sorry. yeah, exactly. And you can see here, you know, initially it was it was quite flat, but, mm. you know, it, it's still a trend upwards. And then, you know, it's had a massive, uh, what is this, 2016. Yeah. And then so if we if we jump while we're in here, it's probably worthwhile having a quick look at um, at the the rankings quickly again to show that that this this is actually correlated with our rankings. So yeah. if your rankings are improving, more yeah. than likely your traffic is as well. Yeah, exactly. The the only caveat to that is if um, the interest in your particular industry has gone down, so no one's actually searching for that um, yep. your products anymore yep. as much. Yep. Um, seasonality. Yeah, seasonality exactly. Yep. So we can see here, you know, that it's 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 been getting better and stronger and stronger. More and more top three rankings, more and more top ten rankings, and less, you know, of these fifties and yep. etc. And that's a that's a really good graphic and an illustration of of how an organic campaign works over time. Mm. Um, you don't see results overnight. We often say it to our clients and um, like like you, we want to see instant results and, and success as early as possible. But it's so like working out. It, you yeah. can't get an overnight result. You can't get a six pack overnight just from doing a few sit ups. You gotta you gotta work you work it yeah. for a few, you know, months or years. Yeah, and it hasn't worked for me. Anyway. <laughs> um, right. So uh, before we'll we'll have a look at some more analytics data. Um, we might look at audience and conversions, but we'll jump into uh, Cayfield Creek again because there's some okay. really good information there. Thank you again to Tim. Um, so if you go into analytics and look at audience, Andrew, if you wouldn't mind. So what have we got here? This is some pretty rich information in terms of the demographics of the audience yeah. that's, that's jumping onto the the Cayfield Creek website. 
again, this is from uh, Google Analytics. Um, so you can access this data from there, um, but you can also get it from here. So you might as well just jump in here. Yeah, essentially. Um, so you can get things like your, you know, your age, how, how old, and does that match up with your, your marketing efforts and, and the products that you're trying to push? Uh, maybe you're attracting 18 year olds, but you really need 50 year olds. So maybe you need to change change your strategy, mm -hmm. or maybe we need to change the strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, important information uh, regards to you know the tone, uh, the sort of messaging, yeah, the imagery we exactly. use on our website, the um, if you've got EDM campaigns, Facebook campaigns, whatever it may be, um, really important information that you know we we line up to your ideal demographics exactly. or your your customer avatar, if you will. Um, we can, you know, we can look at gender and, and devices. How, how, you know, we, we've got over fifty percent of people are coming through um, tablet and mobile. So, um, you know, if you're going to get a, a new website, then you know you might want to consider um, designing it firsthand for mobile devices rather than desktop, because most of your traffic is coming from it. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, we'll jump. Where do we in, want to go next? We'll jump into conversions. Yep. Yep. So what are we talking about here is conversion. So this is um, for the accountants out there and the bean counters. This is what we love talking about. The uh, what, what is delivering us a return on investment in terms of our uh, in terms of our online marketing campaign. So we're investing in it. We always want to see what the outcome is and what it's delivering for us in terms of uh, in terms of a business. So it's important to track goals and conversions. And your key measurements of success within the online space. Yeah, exactly. Like rankings are nice. It's a, it's, it's great, but it's not a, you know, it's not a vanity project. It's not on principle alone. The reason why we're getting you rankings is to bring you more traffic, Correct. which will in turn hopefully get you more conversions and, and people contacting you. Yeah, we want to be shifting that needle as much as we can. So, yeah. um, a nice little dashboard here that that shows the the goal completions. Um, over the period of time from uh, October 16 through to current day, uh, 1,400 goals. Don't worry too much about the goal value here. Um, it's it's a bit of a um, it's something that's fed through from Google Analytics, mm. and it's something that we can manually input and determine what we would like to pay for a for a lead, and then mm. that's just totaling up all those all those leads. Yes, yeah, so don't so, yeah, so don't hone on that. Yep. The, the more important numbers here are certainly the goal completions and also the conversion rate, which yep. is that's an excellent conversion rate. <laughs> yeah, very um, good. Very very high. Um, and then if we scroll down the page, we can see um, which goals are contributing to that fourteen hundred uh, up the top there. So. Tim um, has set these goals in conjunction with Andrew and, and Josh, who's running the social campaign. Um, these are the sorts of things he's wanting to see sh us shift the needle in. Yeah. Um, so, so Tim does, um, you know, he's got a multi-purpose um, space where he where he does, uh, you know, hosts weddings or functions, and you know, he does glamping weddings, um, really, really cool. Um, so he wants to get people to download the wedding brochure and have have a bit more information, um, and then we're going to assume that a few of those will hopefully have called through as well after Correct. that point. And also the summer camps as well. Yeah, so he does have those kids summer camps and school camps, um, and getting people to sign up and book, book straight in. So that's that's instant. Um, instant revenue right there. Perfect. Okay. So um, please jump in, look at your conversions. It's, it's a lot easier to, to navigate than the old. Yeah, than analytics. Than analytics. Google Analytics. Yeah. Yep. A lot more. Um, also, just quickly, if you're an e-commerce site, this is where you're going to get your, your e-commerce information. Um, Cave Hill's not e-commerce, so we, you know, we don't have information there. Yeah. Cool. Well, while we're in Cave Hill, um, it's probably worthwhile jumping into the social side sure, of things, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, in particular, I guess the overview and also the, the yep. feed in Facebook. Yeah, just quickly the overview. Um, nothing you probably haven't seen before. Um, just some very basic stats around um, split. Um, so you've got we'll, Facebook likes, Twitter followers, and Instagram followers there. Yep. Um, and the main thing that we're, we're doing for Tim and helping out with is the uh, Facebook. Um, so we're running some, you know, some uh, organic stuff, unpaid. Um, Facebook posts as well as some advertisements um, that we're paying for um, to, to Facebook. So we can get some information around all that, the, the, the ages. The, again, this is information that you can get from social, uh, from your Facebook account. It's a little bit trickier to access, and again, it's all in the one place right here, so you can see where they're all coming from, the top cities, the languages, all that sort of stuff. We can see the individual posts themselves. 
So if you're if you've perhaps got a campaign uh, run through us, you might like to see the actual posts that are going out all in one place, see their reach, the likes, the clicks, you know, all this sort of stuff. And to be honest, I don't know, you may disagree with me, but I I feel this is a lot easier to navigate yeah. Facebook itself in terms yeah, I get of lost reporting. In there. Yeah. In terms of reporting. Um, and it's just so great that this is the, this is pretty reasonably new. Was it Instagram feed that was new? Uh, I think both. Yeah. So, yeah. in order, in, in, you know, we come in here and we can straight away see all these posts, um, how much reach, how many clicks, how many likes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So Tim can can log on there while he's looking at his keyword rankings, while he's um, you know looking at his Google search console. He can jump here at the same time and say, Hey, how's my how's the social going this week, or you know tonight, or, or whatever. Um, and he can have some good conversations, make some informed decisions with, with Josh um, on his social media. Cool. Well, well we've got a, probably about five, ten minutes before we jump into questions, I should think. So okay. um, we'll just quickly race through AdWords. Okay. Um, so we Store can Bay. use Storebay. Yep. Yep. Storebay, Andrew, what do they do? Quiz Store Bay. question. Storebay, one of my clients, yep. uh, Dean. Love Dean. He he uh, he, <laughs> he loves me. We're, we've got a good relationship. He he makes uh, or manufactures rather uh, over bonnet storage cabinets. So if you're lacking a bit of space in your garage or your apartment, you need need some space. He'll he'll uh, be able to sort you out. Storebay.com.au. Thank you very much. <laughs> you sound like a radio. <laughs> Um, so what have we got here? We're, we've got a Google AdWords campaign uh, running for Dean. Yep. Um, Similar information again that you can see through analytics, but again, it's a lot easier to digest and, and consume. Yeah. Um, so over this particular period of time, um, we've got... Which is back to January. Yep, so we've been running the campaign. It's delivered us a 1,000 clicks, um, 93,000 impressions. So we spoke about impressions before. That's yep. people who actually have viewed, viewed the ad. Yep. Yep. Um, cost, obviously, how much has been spent, the average cost per click. We had 50 conversions for a conversion rate of 4.66%. So, again, if we're over 3%, we're, we're happy with that. Yep. And um, the cost per cost conversion, per conversion this is what we're going to focus yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So that's good bang for buck because, um, you know, uh, uh, Dean, Dean's products are reasonably... Yep, they're a lucrative sort of a, a yeah, product. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah exactly. And, um, you know, a, a fairly high-end product. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you're having business decisions internally about how much you're prepared to pay for an actual conversion, like an actual lead, um, that this is the sort of number we want yeah, to be talking yeah. about and having, and having conversations regularly with your account manager about Absolutely. It. Yeah, very good point. Um, and you can see down totally here the yeah. campaigns you're running and things. Yep. Um, don't think we've got too much time to jump in there and have a no. good look. But look, if you're running a campaign, you can jump in there and have a have a good look at the information um, there. Um, the last point we want to show is, and this is a really new tool that you know we've introduced here recently at Web Firm uh, for our for our clients. Is we don't have too many people that are on board with it just at the moment, just because it's relatively new um, and you know, campaign dependent, of course, but it's a it's a call tracking uh, tool. So it allows you to track the calls that come through to your business uh, from your online sources, in particular your website and the campaigns you're running for you. Yep. So what we've got here on 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 the screen is um, you, as you'll see on the, on the right hand side up here, it's fairly new, so it hasn't been in place for very long. Um, but these are the calls that, uh, that the website has delivered and the campaigns have delivered to uh, performance business sales. So thank you to the team over in performance business sales over in Perth. It's very kind of you to share this uh, data with, with the audience today. So you'll see that um, it's delivered 74 calls, 67 of those were answered, 7 missed, and 50 of those were first time callers. If you scroll down just for a moment, Andrew, what, what you'll see here on the screen is the actual source that these calls came from. So um, in the source type column, you'll see Google Organic. So those are those those are listings on Google. People have searched for. Um, want to sell my business. What, they want to sell their business. They want to look for a business broker over in yep. Perth. Um, they have stumbled across performance business sales and clicked on their on their ad. And Sorry, what, on their, their snippet, not exactly. their ad. Exactly. Yep. Um, and so what they will see is the normal website, except this 
this program will swap out the phone number. Um, so they'll call a phone number, it will ping somewhere and redirect back to their ordinary phone number. Yeah, and going down, you'll see here, there's, some, there's a direct uh, lead, if you will, that has, has come through. Um, Google Paid, so if you're running a bit of a, a paid campaign yep. through Google AdWords paid, or Slate, chip, chipped in there a little bit. Yep, they've chipped in there, and so on and so forth. The other neat thing about this is not just a tracking tool. Yeah. Um, so a little, you, what you can do through Google and others, you can track clip to calls, and that's great. But this goes one step further. It attracts all of your calls that come through from the website, but it also records the calls as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess, you know, for those of you out there that are sort of thinking on a bit of a tangent at the moment, what else could that mean for you as a business? Of course, it means that you can you can listen to the call again and get the information for, for that lead if you've missed anything. Also, you can use it as a bit of a sales coaching tool as well. Yeah. Um, you know, for your, your inbound uh you know, call center, sales team, or receptionist, whoever may be taking these, these calls inbound, you can listen back to the calls, gather some insights from that particular engagement, that conversation, and use it as a bit of a sales coaching tool as well. So yeah. Really. Don't want you to make a big witch hunt out of it or anything like that. No, no, no <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. But, but um, uh, it's still useful. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, as you say, it's it's a, it's a reasonably new tool, um, and not too many of you out there have it. Um, but it's really, really good for attribution. Um, I remember, you know, a couple of years ago, I was having a conversation with a client about, um, you know, how is the campaign going? And we, we started talking about phone calls, and it was about, and they, I said, well, is the phone ringing more? And they said, oh, we don't think it's ringing more, but we're not quite sure. It doesn't feel like it's ringing more. Well, this piece of software takes that. Yeah, takes yeah, that out guesswork. Of it. Yep. Gut feeling. <laughs> it takes the subjectivity out of it. Yeah. And you can provide an objective um, view and metric around what what the website is actually delivering in terms of phone calls, which is great. Yeah. Yep. Um, just lastly, I will just quickly say that you, you, if you have this software put in, you, you just click this and it'll um, download for you your um, you little thing. So you play it through your iTunes like a little MP3 file. Perfect. Um, so just before we jump into q and I think, look, we've, we've covered a, a lot of information today um, and we have uh, flew through some of it. Um, so if there is some of it you want to square off again and you don't want to raise it now in the question and answer um, forum, um, please, please do uh, contact your account manager and we'd be more than happy to, to show you through that. Um, but just before we do that, so we've, we've covered off the live demo, so um, we're going to open up for a bit of a Q&A session now. Um, so feel free um, to, uh, there's a question box there on the side. Um, if you've got any questions, it may be campaign specific in which you know you may, want, may not want to share it in this forum, but if you've got a general question that, you, that you'd love to answer now, ask now, sorry, um, please do chuck it in there in the question box and we'd be more than happy to, um, to square that off with you. Right, first question uh, from Michael. Um, the call tracking software, can, can every website have that or is, or is it website specific depending on what sort of website you've got, whether it's WordPress, how do I go about getting it on, on the website? Yeah, good question. It, 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 I, I would say that you can put it on any website, um, but uh, you know our, our bread and butter is WordPress. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you can add it to virtually any site um, that allows you know you to edit the code. Okay, lovely, cool, perfect. Um, with regards to um, with regards to rankings, um, this is a question from Sophie, by the way. Sorry, Sophie. Um, Sophie, with regards to rankings, um, can I go and add more? Keywords myself, or do I need to talk to my account manager and, and add those in? Yeah, good question. Um, quite a few of you might have some keywords in there that were relevant a year ago, but it, it might have changed now. So um, yeah, absolutely, give give your account manager a call if you're seeing some keywords in there, or you're not seeing keywords, you know that you think should be in there. Uh, please get in touch because we want to be tracking the keywords that are that you think matter, and we can get some more information around. Uh, you know, search volumes and that sort of thing around the keywords that you think are missing too. Okay, perfect, lovely. Um, just one more question at this stage. Um, question from 
uh, Scott up in Sydney. Uh, Scott has a question um, regarding his backlink profile. Um, he's just wondering, you know, is there a number he should be striving for with his backlinks? Like if he's looking at his dashboard, mm. he's asked, is there a number, you know, is, is there something he should be striving for? Um, is there's, there's, well, yeah, I mean, I think Reese said it before, five, five, ten years ago, it, it was definitely the number, the more the better kind of thing. Now it's, you know, if you can get one link from a government website, you're laughing, you know, that's worth millions of, 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 of small bad links um, okay. because Google just ignores the, the small stuff or in fact um, from links from bad websites can actually can, can actually hurt you. Okay so I'm going to ask my own question here. Yes. How do I go about getting extra backlinks or how do, how do a web firm go about getting extra backlinks? Well that's a that's a good point. Um, the thing that has to happen is it's, it's a collaboration between um, an account manager as, as myself and the, uh, the client you so we, we need to have a discussion around who your current partners are maybe you, you've worked with um, you know you subcontract out to so-and-so from wherever um, we can we can have discussions with them and we can write content for them put it on their website that links back to us or vice versa and we can build partnerships that way so um, okay. always good to have a think about who you work with um, some good friends with um, in, in the industry right. and, and you can work together to help each other out a bit of a, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Right, so when you've got a blog, you don't have to just be posting it on your website, you can actually be writing the blog for an external source, if you will, that yeah. points back to your website. That's right, yep. Okay, um, just a quick query from Amanda. Um, Amanda is asked, Thank, well, she said, thanks for the presentation. Uh, no worries, Amanda, any time. <laughs> um, uh, she's asked, um, how, do I get, how do I get this platform? I don't think I've got it at the moment. Uh, the, the, call, the call tracking or the... Sorry. No, no, I think she's oh, referring just the platform just to in the general? dashboard itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, just give us a call and we, we, can, um, we can talk about implementing it. It's usually part of some sort of strategy that we would provide in tandem with it mm. um, so that we can sort of track what we're doing and see that it's working and, and, and tailor it. Um, but uh, if, if you don't currently have something similar to this or you, you don't have access to all your data that you, you might be expecting or have seen here today, um, yeah, I mean, give us a call. We, we can we can probably hook you up with something, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, so it's campaign specific and dependent. Some of the, um, some some campaigns that have been in place for a little while that, that haven't been, um, I guess, updated to some of our, our newer newer offerings um, may not have it currently, um, but please do give your account manager a call and we can certainly have a discussion about getting you on board with this. Um, and just a last question uh, from Tara. Uh, so Tara has asked, how much does the call tracking cost? Um, Look, that's really dependent on your business because it has some implications with regards to how many calls you are getting. So um, best to open that chat up directly with your account manager and we can provide you with, um, with a specific costing around that. And uh, yeah, is it, would you agree yeah, with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it does vary on the amount of calls that you're actually receiving. Yeah, yeah. So it's got like a, a slight... Um, You'd be surprised at how cost effective it is though. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. it sounds but pretty, pretty flash and technical, um, but uh, it's, it's very, very cost effective in terms of what it can deliver for you as a business. Um, so I don't think we've got, oh, we've got one last question, sorry. A question from Victoria. What's considered an old website? It's a great question. Well, uh, if it looks old, it's, it's probably old. Um, Really, you, you're kind of looking at it subjectively. Um, if you're not looking, I mean, we're looking at websites all day. So as soon as I see one that I think it needs updating, I can spot it straight away. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not looking at websites all the time, it might be a bit, bit harder for you to um, to see that. Mm -hmm. Best thing to do is look at the competitors. So if you if you're thinking, oh, should I update my website? Look at your competitors. If their websites are a lot flasher than yours, and yeah. you think that, then you probably need to update because more than likely your, your customers are going to be just doing business with the with the flasher looking website. Yeah, I guess so, something to add there is um, like it's hard to put a timeline on it, Victoria. Um, 
but if your website hasn't been built within the sort of the last three, four years ish, five, five okay. yeah. um, it's probably due an update. And also, uh, it's the other thing to take into account here. It's it's a lot depends on the, the the content management system you're using as well. If you don't have a WordPress content management system or something similar at, at that sort of industry standard and level, um, you know something like some of the Joomla or something similar to that, if you don't have something on that industry level and it's um, it's hard coded and you don't actually have a content management system to, to get into in the back end, then I dare say it's probably outdated and, and it's, it requires an update. Mm. Would you agree with, with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yep. 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 Um, yeah, thanks for the question there, Victoria. Um, so if there's no other queries at this stage, um, we may let everyone either go to their lunch break or to those over in Perth uh, to morning tea. Um, but thank you very much for joining us today. Um, this is the first webinar of many. Um, it's been yeah, great to introduce the, uh, the new reporting software and uh, dashboard to you today. We'd encourage you all to jump in there and have a really good play around. Um, we're expecting many of you will have questions and we hope that you uh, hit your account managers up with those questions because the more you engage with these tools and the more you become comfortable uh, looking around and, and having conversations within this space, the more effective we can be with, with your campaign yeah. as well. Yep. So, um, so yeah, signing off from, from myself, Reese, and also Andrew here. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Cheers. Bye-bye.